All right, here we are, guys. Uh, gonna start our final round here. And you can see with where we are, it's the same spot that I left off at the end of the opener. And this is where we're gonna actually have to start kind of putting forth a little bit better effort here. So we're going to make sure that, uh, you know, we try to put the best balls on uh, to give us a chance to potentially hole out if possible. Now, what I'd ideally like to do is maybe get over to this right-hand side. So I'm basically trying to think of a shot that's going to allow me to do that would be ideal. Alternatively, I could just kind of stay over to this left-hand side. If I do that, though, I'll probably not be able to hole out. <clears throat> Also have to be somewhat careful here, too, um, because you don't want to bring par into the equation. So foremost here, I'm going to have to uh, ensure that I don't clip the rough kind of like that. Or roll into the rough, for that matter. So do have to be just a little bit careful in this final round here. Just want to kind of take a look at things. So I'm thinking maybe somewhere around here. You can see I'm away from the edge. That's going to allow me, you know, you can see at about five rings here. I wouldn't imagine, you know, I'm going to clip the rough if I'm five rings from it. And there's a perfect ball. Just going to see if I can't jump over here. And there you can see it's enough to roll into the fairway and going to try to give ourselves a relatively decent look here so the wind is very small it is kind of a good wind to maybe potentially go for the rough bump here Having it be small reduces the chance that you're going to miss the target. And it looks like I'm just out of range to do that, unfortunately. So I had to get just a little bit closer. I'm not going to risk it. So we're just going to play it over here with some backspin. Another thing I could do is I could I could play the, uh, the bump over this way. It might be a little risky. So we're just going to essentially play it safe here. Play it into the green here. You can see with what I'm doing with my aim. And we're just going to curl it back around. Making sure to, uh, hopefully, make sure that, uh, you know, you're clear enough of that rough to not bring any problems into the equation. And here you can see I roll it into the green. And we're just going to take our birdie. <clears throat> you know, if I'm not going to get myself to a position where I can get aggressive on this rough and be able to uh, potentially hold out, you know, might as well just go over to the left. But, you know, hopefully on the back, you know, I can get just over that rough and get up there about uh, 15, 20 more yards. Is all that we're gonna have to do to get into range there. So here you can see we start off uh, relatively good. Good opportunity here to be able to hold this one. I wouldn't expect uh, you know, too much problems here. So there we are, just rolled it in, get our birdie. And move on to hole number two. Most important thing is going to be, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, we don't give up any strokes for sure. And we also want to create a nice possibility for the hole out as well. So I'm going to keep, uh, you know, I'm thinking at least a marlin here at the very least. 
have that side spin is going to make my life a little bit easier. Quasar could be nice as well. We just go down to a Marlin here. This is going to be a hard holdout either way. But as you can see, that since I've been curling this, uh, you know, having that extra side spin is just kind of a, a really nice thing to have. So we are going to want to land over here with quite a bit of curl. So I'm going to try to land on this plane and just curl it somewhere right around here. Almost three rings just to be on the safe side. Mmm. Call it a great ball here. Looks like it's just going to be enough to catch that, uh, clip that rough there. You want to make sure that you're definitely curling it enough. And somewhere around maybe, you know, three top spin is probably the safety that, uh, you know, you could be a little bit, uh, more aggressive with your line. I'm trying to, you know, more than anything, just kind of play it safe. As you can see, I did catch a great ball. So creating that nice curl angle, you know, gives me the potential to, to roll through there without, without needing to worry about uh, potentially going into either bunker. It's kind of what I was trying to, uh, as you can see, I provided, I left myself enough error there um, to, great ball and stay out of the sand. So here you can see that the uh, ball guide fits inside the circle. Anytime that's the case, I just go ahead and dunk. Um, even with a great ball, it's just going to catch the left edge of the cup. So, um, you know, plenty of room for error there and definitely my shot of choice. Takes any uncertainty or possible lip out out of the equation. And there you can see my opponent just kind of gently gets that one to roll down. <clears throat> Tough shot here. So straight into the wind. What I typically like to do is bounce right around here. So I'm thinking going right onto the edge of this bunker here. Just a little bit of curl. And not too bad. You can see, you know, I had been using just a little bit of backspin. Um, since I'm into so much of a headwind there, I didn't use the backspin there. So I did want to uh, just make kind of a mental note there. You can kind of see the way that I will go about doing that. Take a look at this guy real quick. Mm. So let's see what he can do. May need just a tiny bit more curl than that. I'm not sure. Let's just see how this plays out. Yeah, it looks like you can see it's coming in just a little bit left there. When you don't have that side spin, just got to give it just a little bit aggressive on the curl there. But also landed a little bit short as well. And didn't get that nice rollout. So let's keep going here. Hole number three, I've been doing with the big dog. I may switch up to Viper for this one, actually. Since I'm going to be using the Titans this round on the par fives to, to basically solidify, make sure that I have the distance that I need. Um, with that extra distance, uh, you know, I may just kind of forego 
on the big dog because I don't expect to run into length issues and it might just give me just a little bit better ball guide to potentially be able to go for this hole out here. <clears throat> so I'm thinking, you know, definitely some curl. Um, I haven't tried this yet. Distance wise, maybe one on the backspin just to be safe. You know, I expect it to land somewhere up here, at least a ring down. So let's just take a look at this. Do some curl here. Ah, I'm hoping with the, you know, that's one of the, the, the reasons that I'm trying to create this nice angle. And so even with the great ball, you'll see that it hopefully is, uh, you know, kind of in line with the fairway to kind of stay in as opposed to kind of roll so off to the side and then roll into the rough. So it still has momentum to come back to the left with creating that nice angle. So this is a relatively decent opportunity, I would imagine. When, when Once I can put the Titan balls on and with a straight wind, I think I, I just get just a little bit better possibility of holding this out. That's an interesting way to go. I haven't really seen people playing over that way. So what I've been doing with my sniper, just kind of pointing it at the hole, getting the third hop right around the top of the fairway, which seems to be right around here. I'm not even really going to touch the spin. Just try to get the uh, positioning correct to get it to where it's kind of rolling out towards the hole. Other than that, I'm thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of about a ring or so for this adjustment. Perfect ball. So let's see how this rolls out. Uh, the third bounce just a little bit short of where I wanted, but you can actually see that it's deviating off, deviating off to the right there anyway. So I may just have to make just a little minor tweak next time because it seems to kind of roll in kind of off a weird hill going that at that angle. So let's see what my opponent does here. Imagine may need to avoid the great ball left for sure. So I do see the bunker over there that you'll want to avoid. Looks like able to avoid that and then aside from that it's probably just going to come down the perfect ball that's a little bit of distance there and unless they have reasonable clubs a pretty good wedge um, there's a good chance a great ball isn't going to be good from that far out so here you can see some of the distance it's about twice as far as you want you do have an end bringer one that's pretty much the best option Still, it may be right on the border of being able to great ball this. So perfect ball should roll in. Sure enough, there it is. Ah, so this hole with a Titan now. That'll make things interesting. You may not need to curl this quite as much. I'm thinking somewhere around here, maybe just use just a tiny bit, just a touch of curl this time. Not enough curl. Needed just a wee bit more there. 
So you had good distance control. 2.72 and just a little light on their ring play there especially early on stages in the game you know you probably want to start refining and practicing your technique for counting rings you can see my opponent doesn't turn the screen and it makes it just a little bit tougher to adjust now i've done this a couple different ways just trying to figure out kind of what i want to do i'd actually like to, to upgrade this now i i feel comfortable i'm at 2500 some coins just going to go ahead and take this upgrade here. Um, it'd be nice if I just had one more. I'd like to at least see. Oh, wow, there it is, too. Mm, I wonder if I should do it. Uh, tough call. Ten gems. You know, I'm thinking about using that club. Another thing I can do is I can switch over to the, uh, to the Saturn on this hole as well. That's going to be a little bit more costly, but it, it would give me the extra top spin that I'm going to want. A little worried about this shot. You can see back spins about equal. And over here, back spins about equal. More so than anything, uh, you know, I'd like to take a chance here, but I don't really think that I can. So since I can't really take a chance, I may just go Marlin here. And just backbone it into the center. You can see from my opener round, I got just a little bit too aggressive on this hole. I'd like to avoid doing that today. So I'm um, just going to be trying to kind of intentionally shooting for the birdie. Not worrying about, you know, just getting through this hole and not making par is going to be my overall goal. So one thing you'll probably want to do is avoid landing up here. It's a little dangerous. <clears throat> so already a Guardian 3. I'd like to, you know, I would have liked to have unlocked Guardian. I was half tempted to play um, Tour 5 before this tournament to see if I could get it because I knew that it would come in, in handy, especially on these par 3s. I'd be able to, to play this shot that my opponent is. When you crank up the backspin, you don't have to worry about this face. So the shot my opponent doing here is going to be safer than the shot that I'm doing. And you can get it closer. So for instance, if I had to play this opponent on the shootout, it'd be almost impossible to beat that guardian shot. And that's one of the biggest reasons to use that in the early levels is because you can just easily do stuff like that. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch up to the Quasar. I, you know, I don't want to kind of really take too much of a chance here. So you can see with where this aim is, I'm going to try to land kind of here. So I'm thinking, you know, three-ish rings, somewhere in the neighborhood of this. And just a little bit of overpower, as you can see. But just trying to be, you know, better safe than anything. So, um, you know, not trying to do anything too aggressive here, just trying to get it into the green and the extra power just makes it that much easier. As you can see, that I can just get it up here and not have to worry too much um, with the extra side spin and everything. It just kind of makes that hole just a little bit more bearable. <clears throat> So here we'll be able to roll this in, try to pick up the shootout as well, hopefully. 
Just keep trucking along here, trying to pick up as many wins as we can. It's tough to beat opponents like this. However, you know, especially with the Quasar ball, if we get hole two again, um, I do think that there's a good possibility that I'll be able to, uh, you know, put it in there very close. This is the only one that I'm a little bit less confident with. You know, I know I can do it. I just find this shot in, in general to just be uh, a little bit of the more complicated variety. You can see what my opponent can do, just kind of crank up the backspin and just kind of really have good distance control. You see with what he's doing with the ball guide, um, this, this, this club makes your life a lot easier. So tough to beat my opponent here. It's tough for my opponent to mess this shot up, especially with the Kingmaker. Don't use your Kingmakers in Rookie. That's the best advice that I can give you. Save these for when you get the Pro. Because there was absolutely nothing, you know, that my opponent needed it for. It wasn't necessary to get, this, get through this hole. So you want to save those uh, for when they are necessary. So what I'm going to do here is about half a backspin. Try to get this going towards the hole. You can see kind of utilizing my guide here. Taking somewhere right around here. Just kind of play that wind. Perfect ball. See how this comes out. Looks pretty good. Hold up. So I might be able to sneak this one out. Looks like I believe I did, which is nice. It's very tough to get this hole. So fortunately I was able to get it and pull out the win there. So as you can see, kind of two different methods to go about doing that. I would prefer to do it like my opponent did. Uh, but I really don't have that luxury yet. So I just kind of got to do what I can and just hope more so than anything that it takes the right bounces. So what hole are we going to now? Five. So let's set up. Let's switch over to bag two here. You can see the clubs that I'm using. <clears throat> all right so let's take a look here try to get it in the fairway more so than anything let's try to create a nice little angle here um, with just a little bit of curl and you know probably not going to do much in terms of power really you can see that i'm not really doing anything just trying to get it over here and get it up here kind of long enough and try to, you know, make it to where maybe a great ball would still kind of still hold the fairway possibility. So just holds the fairway there. But what I should be able to do is easily get this up closer to the green. 
and get myself a nice possibility here. I'm trying to create that nice little angle to keep it out of the sand as well. So I'm not going to try to force the issue here um, because, you know, I'd like to make sure and kind of ensure the possibility of having a holdout for a pitch. So um, I would have liked to have just kind of concentrated on perfect ball just a little bit much. I was just a little bit off, but let's see if it holds. It looks like it did. That's another reason that I didn't want to, to, to curl there too much is to kind of get myself, you know, and I wanted to kind of keep that precision there. As you can see, I really didn't go into overpower. I was just trying to, you know, concentrate more than anything on perfect ball, but also not cre create too much curl or angle or anything to where, you know, it would, it would roll down and you can see it barely held up. So it could have went either way, you know, it could have slipped into the rough. But I'm glad it didn't. And let's see if we can't get this one. This is going to be a critical hole to kind of the way that our final score turns out. So um, I would have liked to have gone for that dunk here. I don't think I'm close enough. So what I'd typically do instead is maybe play towards the front, thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe two per ring or so. No, not two per ring, like three per ring. Almost. So I'm thinking somewhere around here. Got the perfect. Oh, no. So just too much. Just barely. So you can see I was probably about 80% club, and that's why I was trying to uh, get the adjustment down. Looks like I just fractionally over-adjusted that. But I guess at least we still got the birdie locked up. It's just going to make things a little bit tougher. It's going to be hard for us to uh, win. And, you know, leaving that in between clubs there, as I mentioned, I would have liked to have dunked that and just kind of used my max number to dunk that. But I was just a little outside of the range. I need to be just a yard farther with that uh, second shot. So hopefully, you know, we can make just minor tweaks on the back and be able to actually get that one. So if I can get it just a little bit closer into range, uh, I probably will attempt that dunk because it's going to be essentially aim at the edge of the cup, maybe just a little bit outside, and hopefully get it to fall. So unfortunately, we were not able to get that. It would have been critical, a critical stroke there. Because I think, you know, putting posting 24 is going to give you a good chance, a relatively good chance in a true rookie division. This is different. It's trying to like thread, I thought I'm trying to thread that fairway there on the edge or something. So another thing I can do is just, you know, beat my opponent. That's another option that I have. So essentially just going to go with top spin. And I'm not trying to do too much here. Just keep it out of the sand. Since I know where my opponent is, all I'm trying to do is just kind of play it up. I'm not trying to hit it close to the hole here. Because you can see that I kind of get in between clubs once you put that tighten on for that hole. So tailwind situations are going to be a little bit tricky. There you can see I'm able to pull out the win. And let's switch back here. Try to get ourselves in line with what we want. Probably use a marlin here. Should be all I need for this one. There's no real benefit to having power or anything on this hole. I'm going to stick to the basics here and do what, uh, do what I've been doing. 
just kind of land up here, a little bit of side spin here. Try to ensure that I stay out of this bunker. So that's the most important thing to me is just getting it up here, keeping it out of the sand, keeping it out of the rough, and getting up to the green. I mean, we, we can be fairly aggressive with this one. You guys have seen from my past attempts, it, it's very makeable. So all you got to do is get it up in play and, you know, hopefully good things come. All right, so right around mid club here. Two ish on the back spin. Thinking of landing somewhere right around here. And yeah, just trying to get the alignment down more than anything. You just want to be a little bit careful with your ring play and how you pull the needle so right around two rings here oh come on totally my fault there takes away an opportunity you know you're never you're never sure that you have it but i do you know feel that it's at least running over the edge of the cup it's going to be very close and throwing away an opportunity missing your perfect ball is not exactly what you want to do now you can see my opponent here going with a little bit more backspin uh, the biggest reason that i don't uh, don't do this is because it's going to be very hard to climb the hill you're almost going to have to land the third hop right on the hole because it's not going to roll out at all you can see even short hitting this here um, you know this might actually roll back down the slope yeah it looks like it is so um, you know i kind of had a uh, a hunch that that may happen because you can see he didn't put the ball guide up on the hill and then short hit it on top. You had to do one or the other. So since he was playing it short, he was essentially playing the wind, but then that doesn't give you the luxury of great, uh, you know, short hitting it as well. You got to put it in the center. So able to pick up the victory there. So let's keep grinding away here. We gotta get on track somewhere. Give herself a good opportunity. You can see this is gonna be a good uh, potential chance here. So I'm thinking, you know, Marlin. Either Marlin or Navigator on this one. You can see we've been kind of honing in on this hole a little bit more each and every attempt.
a little bit long there. So we're at around half a bar. Try to get somewhat aggressive here with our approach. A little bit of curl. Just a little bit more than a ring. So a little bit of curl. So if we can't get this alignment, it'd be nice to pick up a stroke here. Nope, just too much. So I shouldn't have used quite that much curl. But you can see I'm I'm getting getting this this hole very nicely refined to where it kind of rolls out the way that we want, which is good. So I'm starting to figure this one out. So it looks like my opponent is going to uh, get a par. It just kind of goes to show you guys the importance of kind of staying in the fairway. And, uh, you know, try to, trying not to do too much is m more important than trying to do anything that may jeopardize your score there. So let me get set up here. Gonna switch it one bag one, I guess, temporarily. Been using QB here. A little bit of extra accuracy lets me get a great ball and stay in the fairway if I'm careful. So definitely don't switch to the extra mile. That's not a good club. So when you do this, you're a great ball away from uh, putting yourself in the uh, rough here. Well, bunker. So um, not worth going for this. Another thing, if you're not using side spin, don't use katanas. Save them. So let's see about this great ball, see if it holds on. Looks close. Looks like it actually did. So what, what I saw from that play is, um, you know, they kind of underplayed the win just slightly, and that's the only reason that that held up. So a little bit on the fortunate side, but as I was mentioning, you know, no need to do any of that. Much better to uh, just kind of stay in play here. I'm kind of looking at about two rings here play my QB doesn't have the accuracy of a hundred yet it's still only about 80 or so so with that in mind you know I don't have to get too uh, too many rings on it quite yet but it still has good accuracy
So right around two on the backspin. Good opportunity here. You get this alignment. So you can see with where I'm aiming, I'm going to try to go right about a ring here. Oh, come on. Uh, so not taking advantage of these opportunities, as you can see. The two easiest chances on this hole, six and eight, I just completely threw away with great balls on both. It's a little bit disheartening here, seeing. Hopefully I can get a couple shots to drop on the back. If I can get like two shots on the back and get it up to 13, you know, for, you know, well, if I can get five plus two hole outs on the back, that would be really, really helpful. Give me a really good chance to actually win, let alone just, uh, you know, bannering. But I do think if I can get to the 24 number, you know, that'll be good or 23. It'll still be really good. So, you know, that's something I'm going to be shooting for is to not make a mistake on nine here and go into the uh, into the other side there. <clears throat> so here you can see just a little bit short on the power portion. So with that being said, I'm going to try to beef this up just a little bit. Trying to get somewhat aggressive, just to try to uh, put it in there to give myself at least a reasonable chance to win. So inside four yards, I'll take that. Very tough shot, very tough hole. Especially when you have to go up against a Goliath. So again, if you have if you have a katana, there's no reason to curl this. Uh, you, you, you could just utilize that side spin. So to do it like this is a bit is a bit awkward. You might as well take advantage of your side spin and just hit perfect ball. So we're able to pick up the win there. And we're going to have to switch this back. This is my main bag. So, and I'm going to switch over to bag two and a Titan ball. So third Titan of the round, I'll need six total, which will leave me with three remaining. And I should be winning Titans as a reward. And depending upon how well I play on the back kind of is going to dictate you know, how many I win. So if I can pick up a stroke, at least, at least get it to 23 would be, you know, I'd be kind of still disappointed, but getting it to 20, 23 at least is the minimum that I'd like to do. Now, what I'm going to do here, um, I'm going to play this, you know, slightly different than what I've been doing. So you're going to see that I'm just going to kind of just go for the normal shot because I think with the extra length, that I have with the Titan. Um, I really just need this in the fairway more than anything. I don't need to do that crazy hook shot um, because I'll have uh, the Titan with just a little bit extra range. So I should be able to get into B50, uh, the big dog range pretty easily here. Another thing I could, you know, potentially do, I could go for this fairway. It does create kind of a long angle um, and it, it would be really a lot beneficial going that way with better clubs. Because this shot's a little bit more straightforward and easy. Especially if you go basic ball. That's going to be a tough shot over there with basic ball. It's still relatively hard with a Titan. Here you can see with what I have, it's manageable. So 
So what I'm thinking is maybe no spin. Just try to land up there on the fairway edge with some curl. Oh, there's no way I great balled that. I hope I accommodated for that enough. It looks like I did. I was pretty sure I did, but I don't feel that I really great balled that. And you can see we are in good shape here. Get it onto the green rather easily. I, I, I was trying to not play it aggressive to where I could just, you know, make sure that a great ball was going to be okay. And as I mentioned, you know, this is something that can be done. Don't get me wrong, but it's uh, it's probably going to require some full overpower and some good precision here. Looks like my opponent did get it. So let's just see how this pans out. Looks like it's going to clip the rough just barely. They may be able to get that pitch. So probably going to come down to perfect ball on this one. So that's the only, you know, drawback to, uh, you know, giving yourself pitches. So it looks like my opponent's able to grab it. It's going to be a tough one. Another tough one. Also a tough land zone here. Ah! Hopefully it doesn't fall too low. It looks like it's holding up pretty pretty reasonably. I was worried about it falling off to the right just a little bit more than that, and I'm glad that it didn't. So I'm pretty sure he won't be able to stop the ball here. So this should be, so, you know, when you're going with the big dog, you're going to pretty much have to, uh, you know, you have to hit that hop over shot, unfortunately. Not doing it, you know, just kind of puts you at uh, a little bit of a disadvantage. Here you can see we dropped 11 under, kind of just slow and steady. Same as our qualifier. Um, hopefully we're able to get at least one or two more strokes. As you can see, I'm actually tied with this guy, but he has me tie brokered. So, um, you know, probably going to need a couple more strokes here. So that's the main thing we're looking at. So you can see this guy devil here. Uh, you know, he even had a 12. So, you know, he got hole eight, which is going to get, put him in position to, uh, to shoot a minus 12 on that side as well. So, um, you know, I, I really need to get up there to that 24 minimum number at the very least. And a lot of guys are going to have me top tiebreakers. So the more that I can separate myself, the better. So I'm going to split these up into two separate streams. Good luck with your uh, rounds here. And I will see you guys coming up on the back.